Good afternoon everyone, it's David Schlothauer here with another detailed weather forecast as we are tracking the potential for a massive snowstorm for the Northern Plains with a massive big severe weather threat for the Midwest and the Deep South by early next week. Now if you are new to the YouTube channel and you really like these detailed weather updates, please consider subscribing, hitting that like button, and sharing this video with your family and friends on social media. And be sure to check out my Weather Force Discord server. There's a link in the description below this video. So to start off, we're going to be looking at the GFS model as we're going to be timing this winter storm all the way from the West Coast into the Rockies and then into the northern and southern plains where it's going to be a much bigger deal with heavy rainfall, strong winds, severe weather. In fact, the SPC does have a slight risk that I will show you here at the very end of the video, which looks pretty concerning despite that it's on day seven. Yes, day seven slight risk. So this is literally for Saturday morning, very heavy rainfall, strong winds, massive snow going on in the mountains of the Sierra. So if you're doing anything, going up into the mountains for that day it is going to be really stormy we're going to possibly be looking at power outages and a lot of problems including for Oregon and Washington but when this thing gets into the um, high plains it's going to even be more significant this is literally a look at Tuesday heavy snowfall for the Rockies for the Intermountain West into the northern Rockies and the northern plains and this is where our surface low really develops we can see right here 992 millibars for um, late Monday night into Tuesday. We have a lot of moisture advection, so we're looking at some strong thunderstorms that could develop late, late Monday into Tuesday, and especially Tuesday, I think we're going to have a really big day on our hands that we really got to monitor. So going forward, this is how it's all going to set up. So by Tuesday afternoon, the curly Q signature of a very mature, powerful winter storm very heavy snowfall here for the northern high plains look at that pressure gradient oh my goodness that is very very tight we're talking about blizzard conditions potentially with this 985 millibars and a lot of cold air being sucked out of the north circulating on the back side of this cold front that is located right here and ahead of this we're going to have a lot of moisture advection we're going to have a lot of severe weather a lot of deep layer shear for supercells that could become tornadic it's going to be a rough one potentially by the middle of next week that's what most of the model guys guidance is beginning to indicate here for next week. This continues to be a big problem all the way to Wednesday into the Great Lakes. You can see um, for portions there of Minnesota, Wisconsin, portions of the Dakotas. Look at this for Tennessee, Alabama, and Mississippi. Exceptional heavy rainfall is anticipated as that cold front really sweeps through. You can see a lot of the warm air advection. There's going to be a lot of dynamics into this system as it sweeps through, and that's going to continue into the Northeast by the end of next week, by Thursday and Friday bringing with it a lot of rain maybe some gusty winds and maybe a little bit of snowfall if there's enough cold air that's able to wrap on the back side of that system so again just reviewing the gfs here it's going to start off in california by the weekend as you can see here and then it's going to get into the rockies by early next week see by sunday and monday lots of heavy snow strong winds and then it's going to become a high plains event for strong winds, heavy snowfall, and severe weather potential for the middle to the end of next week. So that's a look at the GFS. What about the European model, the ECMWF? There's the most reliable global models that we like to look at is one of them is the GFS and the another one is a European, which we're looking at. So we can see the timing here. Again, California getting a lot of snow, very heavy snow. We are probably looking at several feet of snow. We're looking at blizzard conditions, strong winds, and then it gets into the Rockies probably by Monday. Now this is running a little bit slower and that's probably why the SPC has it for Monday into Tuesday for that severe weather event. And we can see how this really pans out. So so by Wednesday, big time severe weather event may be uh, developing by um, Wednesday morning across southeastern Texas, Louisiana, uh, the Arklatex into the Mislatex area, Tennessee. If you're in um, Indiana, if you're in Michigan, we're talking a lot of moisture advection, warm air advection.
smooth action along with that deep layer shear. We also have a lot of heavy snowfall on the backside. So these two most reliable global computer models are hinting at a pretty substantial system that could really cause a lot of problems for a lot of people um, in the high plains in the midwest for the early to the middle of next week and then eventually getting into the northeast as early as thursday very similar to the u.s gfs model that we see here by late next week by thursday and friday it's dumping it's raining it's windy it's stormy from coast to coast with this particular system this is really going to be very impactful if the models do continue showing this so now we talked about how substantial this winter storm is going to be not just for california but also as far as the rainfall goes in the snowfall speaking of that here's a look at the gfs on the snowfall forecast over the next 10 days and we can see how much is going to accumulate here all the way um, into the end of next week look at that for the sierra we're talking a hundred plus inches now just take that with a grain of salt. I don't think we'll see that much, but I'll tell you what, with an atmospheric river hitting the west, it is not surprising to see over 100 inches of snow. To be specific, the GFS has almost 150 inches of snow. That is literally almost 15, it's like 12 to 13 feet. That's a lot of snow, at least over 10 feet, um, in other words. And then lots of snow for the Intermountain West, the Desert Southwest, into the Northern Rockies, Central Rockies. And of course, there is the signature of this winter storm that does set up on the US GFS model. There could be a couple of feet on this particular model run. If we look at the 12Z run from this morning, we can see it's very, um, consistent the 060 run somewhere in that ballpark still for the northern plains and then if we go back very similar so we're looking at past model run data and there has been a consistency leaning towards a big time snowstorm for nebraska for the dakotas for minnesota that could lead to some big time blizzard conditions with some damaging winds and power outages along to go with that so now as far as how much snowfall the european model shows well let's kind of take this forward this is going all the way out to 10 days and we can see with what is all expected very similar again big time snowfall um in the intermountain west also along the california coast into the cascade range we're talking several uh, a couple of feet and in other words for the northern rockies and then maybe a couple of feet or so of snowfall for the northern plains but my goodness if you're a Californian like me, you really need to be aware of this weekend because a lot of people like to go into the mountains to go to Lake Tahoe, going to Reno. If you're going to Bear Valley, Sugar Bowl. If you're going to Yosemite, if you're going to uh, Bear Valley, you really need to check the roads this weekend because it's going to be dicey and then it's going to be very dicey by early next week for the Northern Plains. So now, why is this system going to be very strong? What is behind it all? What are we seeing in the dynamical aspect of things? Well, this is a look at the 500 millibar height map. This is, in other words, showing you the topographical map where there's different air mass di densities. So colder air in green here in this case versus warmer, more Mediterranean air to the south where you're seeing higher heights. Let's kind of ignore that and let's just kind of focus on the surface pressure analysis because in a standpoint, it is hard to kind of extrapolate all of this because there is a lot going on here on the map. So I'm just going to simplify it as much as I can for you all. So day five, we have this trough all across the West as we kind of sampled in the models. That's well indicated here by this point. We have a surface low that gets going over the leeward side of the Rocky Mountains. That's going to be the surface low that's going to be responsible for what's to come. So going all the way down into or going through the weekend into the early part of next week this trough is very very deep you can see the 540 height line down here this is a very mature trough it's nearly negatively tilted it's almost a scoop up kind of an ice cream scoop effect where you got the trough here you got the surface low right here this thing is going to get nasty by uh, monday night into tuesday and so rolling that through by tuesday very deep cyclo uh, cyclogenesis going on here at 987 millibars that is very deep very tight pressure gradient with the 1030 millibar high over um 
over Saskatchewan and Manitoba, Canada. So between the two, you get a very tight pressure gradient force. That's going to mean heavy snowfall on top of very strong winds. So we're going to see drifting snow, whiteout conditions with that system. And that's going to kind of curl up here with the overall flow with a very strong bowling ball looking system over Wisconsin, over um, Minnesota, over Illinois, over Iowa. Wow, that is a very, very oppressive looking nasty storm. That is something that you don't typically want to see this early in December because it could mean a lot of severe weather that we'll be getting into here in just a second. So that's a look at that system and then that kind of rolls on through into the northeast eventually by day 10. But of course, day 10, a lot of things are very murky, but that looks still kind of significant in its standpoint with this very tight pressure gradient that is anticipated. Excuse me there. So now, on to the severe weather side of things. So now that we talked about how much snowfall you're gonna see, and so rainfall totals over the next 10 days, simple, very heavy amounts. We're talking five plus inches over Tennessee, over Kentucky, Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, Arkansas, Missouri. We're talking a slight risk for flash flooding. This might get upgraded to a moderate risk for the threat for heavy rainfall in this region. Very heavy rainfall for the Intermountain West here. Look at this. My goodness. For California, we are talking five plus inches of rain. My goodness, in 10 days. That's a lot. Okay, and also maybe 10 inches of QPFs over the mountains of the Sierra here. So we are really, really in good shape here if you are a Californian like I am and we really need the rain. And then of course over here in Oregon and Washington, not as much rain of course, but still enough in the bucket to keep you guys alive then kind of starving from the rain, right? But wow, very active pattern, I, I've got to say. I, you don't see this very often. All right, so now to your favorite part, the severe weather aspect of things. What is going to be going on here for our system by the middle of the week, right? Early, middle, kind of however you want to put it. First of all, this is the 500 millibar height map, and you're probably asking, why is David looking at this? Why does this mean a lot, right? This is at 18,000 feet because it is going to be what makes our system dynamic, right? We have the cold front, we got the warm front kind of meeting up at that low pressure center, and then we got the dry line that's behind it. So things are kind of crackling here for a big system. So for Tuesday morning, very strong jet streak at over 100 knots is going to be in place over northern Texas, over Oklahoma, right? If we take a look at the, um, this is at 850 millibars, the surface, we have very strong low level flow in place. That's 50 to almost 55 knots. That's strong indeed, and it's coming out of the southwest. But look at this. Let's take a look at the surface winds here coming in out of the southerly direction here, anywhere between 25 to 40 miles an hour. That's going to induce a lot of low level shear and helicity. And if we get any supercells out ahead of this, which look possible, we're going to see tornadic type systems um, shaping up here over Texas, over Oklahoma, Arkansas, Louisiana, the Arklatex, Mislatex area, something that we really got to monitor in coming days as this could be one of those di big days again where we may have a heightened risk for tornadoes, large hail, and damaging winds in the deep south with the system that develops, okay? And so that's what we're expecting. And of course, if we go a little forward here, we can see how this uh, really um, bundles up. Very, very screaming um, upper level jet here at over 115 knots. That is very, very substantial. Ethan would be here and looking at this and be like, wow, that is a monster. So going all the way into Tuesday afternoon, very strong low-level jet. I mean, this thing is cranking at over 60 knots over the Mislatex area, Arklatex into Indiana, over um, uh, uh, Illinois, over Kentucky. Wow, that is definitely 
something that is a lot of energy in the low levels and that's going to transport into the surface if we look at our surface wind forecast by on tuesday afternoon look at this surface winds here anywhere between 30 to almost 40 miles an hour that is really going to bring down trees and power lines but most importantly we're going to have a lot of low level shear if there's enough instability and moisture advection which we'll look at here in just a second but look at these winds on the back side of the system also for the high plains approaching 50 knots that is about 55 to 60 mile an hour sustained winds that's a big deal so now the ingredients now that we looked at our wind dynamics for monday into tuesday what about our moisture transport well we have a lot of moisture that is going to be advecting northward here we have low 60 dew points all the way up into st louis missouri all the way into portions there of southern illinois southern Indi um, indiana as well as portions of tennessee and the arklatex region uh, further south here we have even mid to upper 60 dew points that will be advecting ahead of this system now this could be a little more depending on how dynamic our system gets but most importantly if we take this forward look at the dynamics with this we have a dry line here we have the cold front right back in here we have the warm front that is going to be advecting some of that moisture northward into say portions here of illinois and indiana by tuesday so a very dynamic system you can see see it without me telling you because you can see the separation there between lots of moist air and drier air on the back side of the system and it's also colder too to keep that in mind all right so temperatures very warm ahead of this my goodness for tuesday morning you got temperatures in the mid to upper 60s could even see low 70s in the morning so that is spring like temperatures in texas louisiana arkansas and oklahoma so really warm to start your morning even in missouri wow very warm there uh well above average um in climatological standards for this time of the year it's early to mid-december here and you're dealing with like what in the heck you're dealing with like april may type temperatures yeah i mean that's really ridiculous and so you can see how this is all going to shape up the cold front is really well indicated here warm front to the north and you get this warm sector that's in place this could really spawn a lot of tornadic supercells something that we have already seen in late uh mid late november actually no wait yeah mid late november and we could see that again believe it or not so we got to really watch things got to keep our eyes on the skies folks because this could be uh, a big deal i don't like hyping this up but the dynamics are there the ingredients the recipe is there for everything so for tuesday morning lots of instability is going to be racing northward we have uh cape values anywhere between say about a thousand joules maybe 1500 to the south here so there's gonna be a lot of instability in place and this is going to continue all the way into tuesday into wednesday so again the threat for severe weather is definitely going to be higher out of this event so now therefore the storm prediction center has now issued a 15 percent chance for severe weather for the arklatex region northeastern texas southeastern oklahoma central and western arkansas northwestern tip there of louisiana and southwestern tips of missouri and um, kansas under the 15 percent risk and this is day seven by the way so this is really far out in time and they already have their gun loaded here with a 15 percent we'll see if they go any higher before day four maybe a 30 percent may need to be introduced we just don't know but there is a risk for severe weather definitely by monday into tuesday and it might carry on into uh tuesday into wednesday so we may have a couple of days here for a significant risk for severe weather wow that was a lot to talk about but if you did like this video everyone if you like the detail if you like my presentations please consider subscribing if you haven't already because I think we're going to be doing a lot of streaming in the next week or so, possibly here in California on our big massive storm system for this weekend. And then, of course, for probably Monday and Tuesday next week for the severe weather and winter side of things. So if you haven't subscribed right now, you might want to do so right now to get the very latest on my channel. Hit the like button and share this video with their family and friends on social media. But anyways, I hope you all enjoyed the video and I will be back with you more very soon 
with more updates on this winter storm i might do something special for you all tomorrow just depending on my day because this is looking pretty significant